The thoroughbred is a magnificent animal, bred for speed, bred to compete, the sport of kings. Well, West Coast has it by a six. It's the all new Let's Go Racing from Parks Casino and Racetrack. It's action packed and fun for the entire family. Three of them are right together with one furlong to go. Let's Go Racing is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. It's fun to see them run. A very pleasant good morning racing fans and welcome here to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. Later this afternoon, a huge day at Gulfstream Park. The features we're interested in, the devoted ale, of course, the fount of yeast stakes as well. We'll preview those here coming up in just a bit. On the racetrack, our local feature is a high-level optional flavor for the Phillies and Bears. Our national race of the week goes back to Gulfstream Park for the Grade 3 Howls Hope, where the 2017 Pennsylvania Nursery winner Prince Lucky was in action as he made his four-year-old debut. We'll also have the terrific Myler Vasilik from Santa Anita and talk to trainer Danny Velasquez about something he did back in December, which was extraordinary. We'll talk to Danny here in just a little bit. Hi, everybody. Keith Jones out of the beautiful first four here at Parks Racing and the best wingman in the world right here, Dick Girardi. And Dick, uh, touch on Danny really quick. Back in December, he had three wins on one program, all first time off a claim. That's extraordinary. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever seen that. I know you don't remember ever seeing that. Yeah, that's kind of a miraculous. And of course, his dad, uh, Freddie, has yeah. been around here for years winning races. And we'll get into their little individual yes. battle here in a little bit. <laughs> well, Dick, uh, of course, later this afternoon, as I mentioned, the Fountain of Youth and the Devona Dale down at Gulfstream Park, we have been following the progress of Maximus Mischief. And we have a very disappointing update on Maximus today. Yeah, no question, Keith. Uh, his final work prior to the Fountain of Youth was last Sunday. It did not go well. Uh, he basically, I, I, nobody's seen it, I mean, other than the people that were actually right. there watching it. But apparently he just didn't finish that well. There wasn't much of a gallop out. And afterwards they discovered, uh, Butchery and his team discovered something unclear at this point to mm -hmm. me exactly what it was. But they said he's going to be out indefinitely, which means he's off the Derby Trail. Uh, what the future is, I just don't know at this point. Uh, just awful news for a really super talented horse. Look, you and I got to see him work here yeah. a bunch of times uh, prior to the Remsen. I saw him work here the day before the PA Derby. That was eight days before his first race. This is as talented a two-year-old as ever run at this racetrack. And, well, we had big hopes for him, but it's the game. You just yeah. hope it doesn't happen to your horse. And, and to Chuck, uh, Zachney, and Glenn yeah. Bennett, I mean, they, they put so much into it, you feel terrible for them. And to Butch and Ginny, this was their horse of a lifetime, and it's just, it's just awful. Dick, it indefinitely is kind of an ominous word here. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, again, we don't know right. at this point the, the, exactly what the problem is or the extent of it, but yeah, indefinitely is not a great yeah. word. So what we're, we're basically telling you is he's obviously off the derby trail. And yeah. what, again, what, what the future is, we just don't know. Well, Dick, let's look at the other side of the coin to devote yeah. later this yep. afternoon, the debut or the season debut of Jaywalk. Yeah, what a sensational 2018 she had, culminating it with the Frisette, where she just crushed the field up in New yep. York, and then the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, where she was as good as any winner on the two days. Uh, John Services had her in training with his son Tyler down yep. at uh, Palmetto's in Florida and Boynton Beach and uh, she is ready to run and I have great confidence yeah. that she'll run great because the service horses don't usually uh, run until they're ready. Well here's more on Jay Walk with John's assistant, his son Tyler. What's your personality like? She's class. She's all class. I mean when she wants to be feisty yeah. she's feisty but when you ask her to do something right okay. I mean she just respects and and she's all class, all class. You, your father, the entire bar must be so excited that she's a champion. She won the Eclipse Award. Definitely. I mean, that, that, for, for small guys from Philadelphia Park, that, that's a huge uh, accomplishment. And to have a horse like her, I mean, she, she did it all. We didn't have to do much. Easy horses like that to train, I mean, the good ones, they do it themselves. I think she's just getting better. I mean, scary to say, but she's, she's one of the nicest horses I've had a, the opportunity to be around. And I was with Smarty and Sophia. And, I mean, she's, she's a nice quality filly. What's it like to have an owner like Chuck Zappi? Oh, it's great. Chuck's great. I mean, he just, he loves the sport. He loves his horses. He loves his help. I mean, he's, he's a great guy to work with. He just, he lets you do your job. He stays out, he comes in, he, he realizes what we all are trying to accomplish as a team, and 
it's a great team effort. And Vic, of course, uh, the Devota Dale, you can bet that later this yep. afternoon as part of that huge racing oh. program down at Gulf Street There'll Park, which we'll talk about. Yeah, down there, we'll no talk doubt. more about later that later on the show. Let's get to our local feature this week. Phillies and Mares going six and six furlongs at an optional claimer. Twenty-five thousand dollar claiming price, second level allowance condition number one, Bowtown Cat, the nine to five favorite retired Joe Taylor. This was a twelve thousand five hundred dollar claim back in December. She's fired three straight yeah. times off the claim. Yeah, Joe doesn't have many horses that don't fire. He had a great 2018, uh, winning 59 races. He's already got nine so far this year. Dick, I don't know what to make of this horse, number three, Doctors of Mischief, who's the second choice mm -hmm. at five to two for trainer Lupe Guerrero. She has been in this spot five times before, two seconds and three fourths. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's always there. Yeah. If you're Get the owner, checks. you're not disappointed because you're making money all the way through. But yeah, you'd like to clear the condition right. at some point and go on to the next. Here's the call of our local race of the week. The Wildcat Combat hits the three eights pole with a two and a half, almost a three length lead. Bowtown Cat is now back giving chase second. Dr. Zabischief has moved to third and is gaining from six lengths out of it. No response right now from Spanky. And then it's Bertranda and on the inside Ranger Lady. Wildcat Combat, a big lead at the top of the stretch. Three sixteenths to go, Wildcat Combat almost three and a half. Bowtown Cat is coming back. Dr. Zabischief now with a strong surge on the outside. Here comes Dr. Zabischief. Wildcat Combat in front, but Dr. Zabischief takes dead aim. Dr. Zabischief, Wildcat Combat. Bertranda, the long shot with a big late run on the inside. Dr. Zabischief takes the lead late. Well, Dick, you mentioned breaking the condition, yep. and she does it she this time. Dr. Zabischief, 5-2, to two, uh, Red Hot Apprentice Julio Correa on board, wins by a length, $7.40 to win. And Dick, if it wasn't tough for her now, now it's really going to be tough. Yeah, but you know what? They just won a $47,000 yeah. <laughs> race, uh, so that's okay. Uh, that money will spend for a while. Uh, but, yeah, she was good. She's always been really solid, and then this time to the winner's circle. Well, Dick, time to end our first break. We come back here on Let's Go Racing. You want to claim a horse? <laughs> Maybe you want to ask Dan. Danny Velasquez. We'll be back with Danny after this. What does Chapman's seven locations and 10 car brands mean to you? It means a huge selection of quality pre-owned vehicles, all makes and models, many one owner low mileage certified with miles of factory warranty remaining, safety checked, meticulously detailed, and each come with a free Carfax report so you can buy with complete confidence at any Chapman Auto Store near you or shop online anytime at ChapmanPreOwned.com. If our emblem is not on your car or truck, you probably did pay too much. Amazing achievements for Pennsylvania breads on the world stage. Thanks to Finest City, Unique Bella, and Shamrock Rose, PA joins Kentucky as the only state in the past decade to breed Eclipse Award champions three straight years. Add that to our unmatched incentives. Plus, our racehorse development fund can only be used to support PA breeding and racing. Why breed anywhere else? This is Brian Sanfratello. Go to pabread.com and see why Pennsylvania is the premier place to breed and race. Looking to join the thrill and excitement of thoroughbred racehorse ownership? Buter Stable can get you started. With more than 25 years of experience under the leadership of Greg and Kate DeMassey, Pewter Stable is one of the industry's leaders in racing partnerships, winning hundreds of races and millions of dollars at racetracks all over the Mid-Atlantic, including New York. No markup, no management fees, makes our partnerships unique and affordable. We are Pewter Stable. The Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association is the advocate for Parks Racing's horsemen and has worked hard to secure better lives for the hundreds of trainers and their families that work in the thoroughbred racing industry. Our horsemen benefit from medical coverage, trainer pension plans, and increased purses. Thanks to these horsemen, racing at Parks is the very best, providing entertainment for you and the entire family. The Pennsylvania horsemen are proud to be part of the community and introduce a new generation of fans to the sport of kings. Welcome back, everyone, to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. Time for our special feature segment today. A pleasure to welcome in trainer Danny Velasquez. And Danny, we, uh, Dick and I talked earlier on the show about your accomplishment uh, back in December. Three wins on the same racing program, all with horses that you just claimed. Yes, first sir. time off the claim. That is an amazing accomplishment. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, uh, it was a surprise, but yeah, we got it done. It was three horses that we claimed all off, off different trainers, three different riders all different claim levels. Uh, some went up, some went down, and uh, it was good. It was good, it was fun. How 
I'm not sure in my 33 years that I've ever seen anybody do that here at the track. Again, a tremendous accomplishment. Now, when you're getting ready to go to the claim box and, and, and make a claim, what are you looking for? Um, confirmation, good form. Um, a lot of my clients and my owners, they, they look at uh, PPs and all the, the, the rags and all like that. So basically, we kind of just make sure that the horse is healthy, looks good, bright-eyed, bouncing, and then we go from there. We drop the slip. Hey, Danny, how many horses are, are in your barn right now? Uh, currently, we, we fluctuate. We go from 21 to 15. We've been getting claimed a lot because of that notion that we're a big claiming barn right now. <laughs> yeah. And, and how many wins did you have last year versus how many wins did your dad, who's also a trainer? I, have? Not that anybody's counting, but I had 31 and he had 30, for the record, just saying. But he's won a few <laughs> thousand. Yeah, but he's won like, a few thousand. Right. I got to catch up right. for sure. Danny, it's not terribly common in sports where a son has an opportunity to compete against his father. What, what is that like? Tell us a little bit about that, getting to compete against your dad. Uh, friendly competition, of course. Um, it feels good. Um, I used to ride for him, as you all know, and um, it, it feels good when we're out there and he has one in and I, I have one in and um, I look at him, I said, you like your horse? He always likes his horse. And I go, and me too. And he gives me the nod, I give him the nod. And, and you know, obviously, if I can't win and he wins, it's, it's the best man, but um, happy, happy. Danny, there's a new program that's just about to get underway in the back stretch. I believe it's the Leg Up program. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, the Leg Up program um, was basically just started. It's it's infancy right now. Um, basically, we're trying to get fresh new people to come on grounds, zero experience. A couple of trainers will basically sign them up, let them kind of get the hang of it, give them a week or two to, to see if they like it. And then from there, if they like it, they can stay. And there's, there's groom jobs, exercise rider jobs, uh, basically a buffet of jobs that we have all the time so um the leg up program will start probably at the end of next month it's a lot of fun it's a big opportunity for a lot of fresh faces to come out and enjoy the horses i mean i i grew up with them but not everybody gets to grow up with the horses so it's 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 new it's fresh and i think it's going to help the pa agriculture it, it can't hurt it's just going to create more jobs and more jobs well danny thanks for taking a couple of minutes with us and congratulations on your success and I think you kind of created a monster for your, your owners with all these wins off the claim. When you claim now, your owners are going to expect an immediate yeah. return. Yeah, always, always. But you know what? It's humbling. I got great staff, and uh, they don't get enough credit. So I got to give credit to my uh, my help, definitely. Well, all the best to you and continued success here in 2019. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's get to our national coverage. It's brought to you by Chapman Auto Group. Unless our emblem is on the back of your car or truck, you probably pay too much. And our national coverage takes us down once again to Gulfstream Park. We'll start with the grade three Howl's Hope Stakes, one mile. That flat one turn mile for $100,000. And Dick, the favorite is uh, Breaking Lucky. Breaking Lucky opens up at, or goes off at nine to five for George Weaver. You go back through his PPs in mm -hmm. 2017, mm -hmm. he was third in the grade one Whitney. Yeah, that'll uh, get you somewhere behind the horse of the year, yeah. Gun Runner, and that amazing horse who ran second at Bizarre Odds. Keen Ice, who can forget him? Second choice, number seven, Coppertown, goes off at two to one for Todd Pletcher. And as you look back through his lines back in 2017, he looked like he could be a star, but he got a lot of time off. Yeah, he, he, really, yeah, he really did, and his last two races, the Cigar and then the Fred Hooper more recently, were just dismal races. Yeah. And there's a horse of local interest here. It's number nine, Prince Lucky, who goes off at 7-1, to one, owner Dan McConnell, and a trainer now into the barn of Todd Pletcher. Dick, 2017, he was a Pennsylvania nursery winner here, mm -hmm. and he closed out his uh, three-year-old season with a big win, the biggest win of his career. Yeah, in the easy go on yeah. uh, Belmont Stakes Day. And he's making his uh, 2019 debut, Prince Lucky, post nine at 7-1. to one. Here's the call. The opening quarter, quick enough, 23 seconds flat. From between horses, Coppertown has a neck on top. Quip is second toward the rail, Prince Lucky a three wide third. Breaking Lucky is fourth behind the speed, racing two and a half lengths off the lead. Back to fifth and Mr. Jordan. Five more to fellowship, the two lingering at the back, Sir Anthony and Tale of Silence. The opening half mile was racehorse time, 45 seconds flat as they round the far turn. Prince Lucky bidding up three wide at Coppertown up front. Back at the inside, Quip begins to drop back. Four clear of Breaking Lucky, who's passed inside by Fellowship as they run to the top of the stretch. Coppertown, Prince Lucky, Pletcher horses kick on with it as they move to the top of the stretch with a quarter of a mile left to go. Johnny V hasn't moved his hands on Prince Lucky. Toward the inside, Castellano working overtime on Coppertown after three quarters and one. 109 and one may wheel in. It's a Pletcher showdown with an eighth of a mile to go. Fellowship tries to spoil the party with a late run down the stand side, but Prince Lucky is winning the battle with Coppertown, and he's going to win the house hope. It's Prince Lucky and John Velasquez moving clear in the end. They'll win by five. 
Well, Dick, I don't think Prince Lucky could have been any more impressive. Ooh, As you watch the run down the back stretch, he was doing it so easily yep. just on the outside of the front runners. And then he made the move at the top of the stretch. Mm -hmm. The jockey, Johnny B, could not have been any more still. Yep. Roused him up, drew off, went on to win by six and paid $17.60 to win. Dan McConnell has himself a pretty good horse here, Prince Lucky. Yeah, he really does, and it's interesting to see what uh, Ty Pletcher does with this horse. I'm thinking when you watch that race, you know, the Met Mile, that's what you're thinking, 106 buyer, or maybe they want to stretch him out, but uh, another really good PA bred out there running for one of the best trainers in the world. Yep. Well, let's get our coverage now out to Santa Anita. The big race there over the weekend was the Great two Buena Vista. That's the Phillies and Bears on the grass at one mile. And the favorite deck, number nine, Vasilika, bet down to four to five for trainer Jerry Holendorfer. And boy, when you look at her PPs, now back in April of last year, mm -hmm. she was just breaking her first allowance condition. Yep. And boy, has she turned into a great grass miler. Yeah, how about a claim 40,000 yeah. last February? Uh, talking about good claims. Uh, trying to win 10 of 12 yeah. since the claim. Yeah, multiple great <laughs> graded winner. I yep. mean, she's just been absolutely sensational. <laughs> Number eight, Alicia's World, the second choice here at nine to two. She is now in the Richard Baltus barn. Dick, she is no longer with that Chad Brown. Yeah, I don't know whether they just thought she'd like the uh, West Coast uh, turf tracks or what it was. You don't normally see horses leave Chad's uh, barn, but maybe that's what it was because it's certainly nobody's intentionally taking yeah. a horse out of Chad's barn. I wouldn't think. Vasilika is four to five. Could she do it again? Here's the call. Mahan Mura, clear by two and a half lengths. Miss Bad Behavior is in hand second. Then comes Take These Chains, who's a bit eager, third, compelled, nice and relaxed in fourth. Another length and a half to English Dancer outside Amandine. Vasilika inches up outside of that pair as they pass the half-mile pole. Another two back to Streak of Luck in Elysia's World. Fahan Mura has opened up a huge lead. It's close to eight lengths around the far turn. Miss Bad Behavior, Take These Chains on the outside, is now asked for a bit more, compelled. Vasilika, yellow silks, green cap, is starting to launch a wide bid. She's within six lengths of the lead, gathering momentum. Streak of Luck is also firing a big shot outside of her. They're at the top of the stretch. Fahan Mura, Vasilika motoring down the center of the course as Miss Bad Behavior gets the lead. But here's Vasilika storming home in the center of the course. And Vasilika, Streak of Luck continues a nice rally into second. But Vasilika, the story just keeps getting better. Well, Nick, that front runner ran off to a big lead heading to the far turn. Yep. Vasilika was still well back, but here she comes with a wide sweeping bit on the far turn. Kicks it in through the lane, goes on to win clear at the end, a length and a half, pays mm -hmm. $3.60 to win. You mentioned the claim. This is now her fifth graded win. Yeah, 10 of 12 and 800000 since the claim, Man. almost, uh, for a $40,000 claim. Boy, I mean, you never know what you're going to get, but boy, that's got to be more than they ever imagined. She's also 15 of 29 lifetime yeah. on the turf. So it wasn't like she didn't have a good record before, but she's obviously gone into another dimension <laughs> since uh, she got into Jerry's barn. Five graded wins now. Dick, we're going to go to Sunland Park. You yes, love going are. to Sunland right Park. Right across the border from El Paso, Texas. There you go. Dick, and this is the Mind That Bird Derby. The three-year-olds at uh, one mile and one sixteenth, a $100,000 purse. The favorite is Wicked Indeed coming out of that uh, Steve Asmussen barn. Dick, four to five. Tell us about that Wicked Indeed. Yeah, Wicked Indeed, I mean, it's just pretty good fourth behind War of Will and the LeCompte. I mean, it was up in the pace. It got tired late. And of course, War of Will came right back to win the Risen Star, so that flatters uh, Wicked a deed a little bit. Second choice is Hustle Up the Five Horse out of that Todd Fincher barn. Mm -hmm. You got to respect anything coming out of that Todd Fincher barn. I would say, and this yeah. is a New Mexico <laughs> bred, so the local horse going for the Mind That Bird Derby on the 10th anniversary uh -oh. of Mind That Bird's Derby at 50 to 1. It's Mind That Bird. <laughs> Tom, Tom Durkin said shocking. Okay, what? Yeah. Where is that coming up the rail? <laughs> Let's get the call from Sunland Park. Racing up the back stretch in front, it is Hustle Up by a length off the inside a bit, but contained in the lead, controlling the pace. In second is one flew south, Walker Stalker the inside, two and a half to Collusionist in fourth, a length and a half away on the inside, Thunderous Applause in the center, iCloud, three wide goes Wicked indeed, and right around the outside starting a run two is McAwesome, and last of all is Passamonte Man, it's Hustle Up continuing to do it easily in front. Hustle Up inside the three and a half furlongs by a length to one flew south, Walker Stalker is third, taking off his wicked indeed around the outside of Collusionist. Hustle up, trying to break away here, has got out by two and a half. 
Well behind the main pack is McAwesome and then came thunderous applause, Passamonte Man at iCloud and now they challenge the leader as they turn its hustle up in front. In the mind that Bird Derby by a length and a half and got further ahead and shot three in front. Down the outside, Wicked Indeed and battling away is Walker Stalker. Hustle up in front, Wicked Indeed going to second but it is Hustle Up well and truly out in front. Wicked Indeed coming now but it's still Hustle Up by two and a half in the mind that Bird Derby. Well, Hustle Up, a well-named horse here, Dick, as he gets hustled up to the yep. lead. And jockey Shane LaViolette just trying to <laughs> throttle him down early, set the pace, and then ended up winning it by a length and paid $7 to win. But Dick, somehow I don't think Hustle Up is going to be in that gate come uh, first Saturday in Bay. Well, he might Maybe. be in the gate, but he'll be like 50 to 1 yeah. or more like Mind That Bird was. Uh, and I, Mind That Bird was one of those horses, I remember saying the morning of the race, well, there's a couple horses that have no chance. Yeah. One of them was Mind That Bird, yeah. but little did I know. Calvin Burrell was once again <laughs> going to find the live rail and ride it into the winter, sir. Hustle up takes the sun, sun types the race at Sunland Park. Let's get to our next break. We come back here on Let's Go Racing. We have weekly awards, a little turf action from Gulfstream to take a look at. And that huge day at Gulfstream. We'll be right back after this. The Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association is the advocate for Parks Racing's horsemen and has worked hard to secure better lives for the hundreds of trainers and their families that work in the thoroughbred racing industry. Our horsemen benefit from medical coverage, trainer pension plans, and increased purses. Thanks to these horsemen, racing at Parks is the very best, providing entertainment for you and the entire family. The Pennsylvania horsemen are proud to be part of the community and introduce a new generation of fans to the sport of kings. Racehorses are pampered, treated with care, and loved. Nothing is more important than their health and their safety. We do right by them. And they do right by us. The hardworking folks who proudly earn our living. In Pennsylvania's horse racing and breeding industries. Horse racing is a lot of fun. But it's so much more. It provides tens of thousands of jobs. 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 And billions in economic impact each year. All across the Commonwealth. Horse racing in Pennsylvania, it's a winner. Welcome back everyone to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing and it's time for our Turning for Home Horse of the Week. And of course it's brought to you by the good folks at Turning for Home. Log on to their website at turningforhome.org and here's Danielle Montgomery with more. Hoping to find a home this week is our Turning for Home Horse of the Week, another ray of hope. No matter how much blood, sweat and tears go into bringing a racehorse into the world, an owner can only hope that they will want to race and win. This beautiful, steel gray four-year-old filly was given a chance to shine with two starts at parks, but she did not care for racing. And now her owners hope that she finds a safe second career, perhaps eventing or any of the hundreds of disciplines thoroughbreds thrive in. She is athletic and sound and has had three post track rides and has proven to be just as sweet and sensible under tack as we had hoped. This filly is available from Black Oak Farm in Florida where she can be vetted and test ridden for hopeful adopters. This is Danielle Montgomery with the PTHA's Turning for Home. And of course our thanks to Danielle for that and Turning for Home also, turning for home also brings us our Jockey and Trainer of the Week and Dick. Our Jockey of the Week is young Julio Correa. He went from a 10 pound bug mm -hmm. to like winning everything. So uh, he is red hot right uh -huh. now, Julio Correa. And our trainer of the week, we just had him on. I know we did it back when he yes, did it, but yes. such an incredible thing. Yeah. Danny Velasquez. Yeah, yeah, give him, give it to Absol him. Again. Okay. Absolutely, he is our trainer of the week. Let's get to race recap. Couple of turf sprints down at Gulf Street Park. Three-year-old boys, three-year-old fillies. The first one to the boys in the Texas Glitter. $75,000. Number five, Stand Up, is the eight to five favorite for trainer Todd Pletcher. But Dick, number four, Yes, I'm Free, a two to one gets the dream trick for a trip for Mark Cassie. Yeah, I'll say, and uh, just comes on to win this thing right at the end, gets in. 80 buyer figure for that top owner and Hollywood star Gary Mark. Now six dollars and forty cents to win. Note the time there, 56.21. Because let's take a look at the three-year-old fillies now in the Melody of Colors. Number one, Beachwood Ella is two to one for Patrick B and Cone. How about our guy Patrick B and Cone? To Dick the Nine play on jumps right to the lead at three to one for Brad Cox, and she's not going to look back. No, she's not going to look back. Is right. They're just never really getting close to her. And as Keith said, she is going to actually run a little faster than the boys. Yes, she did. Texas look. 55 85 is her time, and you get eight dollars and forty cents to win on play on. Well, I on racing at the top of the show. We touched on the big day at Gulfstream mm -hmm. Park. Nine graded races, six of them on the grass. Yeah, it's a huge day. It's the biggest prep day so far for the three year old. 
colts so unfortunately we will not see maximus right. mischief but there's some really talented horses even possibly a horse that could win the derby so pay close attention and of course the great philly the two-year-old philly yeah. champion jaywalk is back for john service as she gears up this race then the ashland then the kentucky oaks yeah. that's the plan Dick, you mean men ta uh, mentioned talented horses? Yes, As sir. we go to news and notes, yeah. you have a talented horse to tell us about, don't Ooh, you? Oh, boy, wait till you see this <laughs> horse. <laughs> right back, news and notes after this. Race horses are pampered. Treated with care and loved. Nothing is more important than their health and their safety. We do right by them. And they do right by us. The hardworking folks who proudly earn our living. In Pennsylvania's horse racing. And breeding industries. Horse racing is a lot of fun. But it's so much more. It provides tens of thousands of jobs. 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 And billions in economic impact each year. All across the Commonwealth. Horse racing in Pennsylvania. It's a winner. What a night. Whether you're looking for some rock, some roll. Whether this table calls your name or this one. If you're into big hits or big bites, Parks is Pennsylvania's number one casino with brand new tables and slots, two new restaurants, and Excite Center featuring the hottest acts. The best is better than ever. Parks Casino, what a night. Welcome back, everyone, to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. Final segment, News and Notes, brought to you by the good folks at Pewter Stable. Log on to their website, become an owner today. It's at pewterstable.com. Bruce Casella behind the camera, my man Dick Girardi and Keith Jones. And Dick going into the break. Good horse. How good is maximum security? Well, we don't know. I mean, this horse just kind of came out of completely out of nowhere. He started Maiden 16 on the Maiden 20th of 16. December at Gulfstream. Runs out, the TV said. Comes back a month later, does it again. Then on February 20th, wins by 18, gets a 102 buyer for Jason Service, who is the hottest man on earth, and they're going to wheel this horse who was eligible to be claimed for 16 back at the Florida Derby at the end of the month. So who knows? Look I mean, out. Yeah, Jason Service, like, I mean, he just missed winning two right. Breeders' Cup races. He's been on a roll for a couple of years, and he's had, had a horse obviously right. in the Derby last year. So. Boy, this is some horse that came out of nowhere. Uh, maximum security. Jason Service. <laughs> Dick, some great news about yes, one sir. of our favorite riders, Kendrick Carmouche, is back. Absolutely had that horrible accident down at Kentucky Downs in early September where he broke his femur and the surgeon said it was like he saw it was in a motorcycle crash. That's what it looked like. Yep. But after months and months of rehab, uh, Kendrick came back for his first race last Sunday at Aqueduct, race six, and he told me, I talked to him earlier in the day, he says, it's sloppy, I have the one hole, what do you think's gonna happen? I'll be on the lead. He was, he was great, the horse couldn't quite last, but, uh, and Kendrick's gonna ride here, he said, on Mondays and Tuesdays. He exercised about 25 horses and he looked just like he always looked great. And Dick, of course, the story on Kedrick and has come back on Let's Go Racing Parks. Absolutely. And Dick, you mentioned the rehab. We see all of these athletes, you know, yeah. they tear up their knees, whatever it yep. is. That rehab is just grueling for these yeah. guys. Yeah, and he was there three days a week. Uh, Kendrick and his family live in Newark, Delaware, near the university down there. And he would, three days a week, and she, the last couple of months, he was there four hours a day. And he did some yeah. swimming and therapy. and. But you knew he would work hard at it. Yep. I mean, he's, look, he's he one does. of the best that's yep. ever ridden here and one of the absolute great guys that we know. Great to have him back, Kendrick. Good luck. And uh, come out and enjoy the day here with us that later this afternoon, 12.55 post. And, of course, you can give it all of the great Gulfstream action here as well. We'll see you next week on Let's Go Racing.